with a bit of luck, I'm not going to drop my wireless mic in the pond and ruin lots of money. This is rather nice. So some of the plants I've chosen here. Um, originally we had lots and lots of the Caltha palustris alba, the pygmy marsh marigold. This is a lovely little clump forming plant that has little white flowers. Calthas are one of the first flowering plants in the spring, you know, a nice sign of spring. So they're a lovely plant to have, but they are over very quickly. So it's nice to have some other plants with some staggered flowering times. Along with the Pulustrus alba, we also have the standard Caltha pulustrus, or the common marsh marigold, uh, a native pond plant. Again, fantastic, lovely yellow flowers, very early flowerer. Um, not quite as, as neat and sort of dense clump forming, but not particularly large, although in this pond it had taken over and a lot of this had really run through, so I'm being quite selective with how much I'm actually going to put back in the pond. Some beautiful variegated iris ensata, um, purple Japanese iris, and these little chaps here are just about to come into flower. This is one of my favourite pond plants. It's not the easiest thing to get established, but a little clump of this in a sunny position looks lovely. Uh, we've got some, let's have a look, some Juncus inflexus blue arrow or blue arrow rush. Again this is another native um, rush, you quite often see these growing around in sort of boggy areas forming these tufts or, or mounds of grass. Looked after and kept tidy, they can be very striking and architectural but you want to keep them trimmed back and, uh, and, and make sure you keep them defined. Now they're a sort of a semi-evergreen plant, evergreen quills, but it's worth cutting this back hard every couple of years down to a few inches so that the following season you get fresh green growth growing through, unhindered but all of the, the dead thatch. And if you do get some sort of dead brown quills, when you're working with rushes and grasses like this, if you just comb your fingers through them, you'll pull away all the dead loose stuff, leaving behind the nice green foliage. We've got some, um, it doesn't look much at the minute, but lots of bits of this. This is a variety of reed mace, or commonly called bulrush, although it's not a bulrush. This is Typhalax marni, um, the slender reed mace. And this is nice because it doesn't get quite as big as the Typha latifolia, the, the big native reed mace. Uh, this chap's gonna get to, you know, perhaps 1.2, 1.3 meters, four to five feet. So it's still tall, but nowhere near as huge or invasive as the, as the common um, reed mace. Lovely, lovely slender upright foliage, nice and architectural, giving you a bit of height. This is going to have to be again sort of tended and looked after and make sure that it doesn't run through this marginal zone and, and take over everything else. So periodically through the season, we'll be pulling out the runners and just keeping it contained to a certain place. Pickerel plant, Pondeterias. I'm always talking about these. This is probably my favourite pond plant. I love the, the tropical kind of waxy foliage and I love the fact that it's a really late flowerer. So pond season tends to be over very quickly. Everything happens at once and then everything sort of is finished and looks a little bit untidy and scrappy. But then the pickerel plants start to come through and, uh, and really steal the show to the end of the year. So they're lovely. Again, I've got little bits of caltha running through this and then I've got a nice clump here of iris versicolor. Uh, the American purple flag iris, not anywhere near as large or invasive as our common native yellow flag iris, but it still gets to a reasonable height. I mean, this is, this is pretty much fully grown here. Um, generally, they would have finished flowering by now, but actually this one I've kept in the shade and it still has some flowering to do with a bit of luck. So running around the other marginal zones, we've got a few other plants here. Again, it doesn't look much at the minute, but this is something called Scirpus cernus, which is a lovely short grass um, looking plant. It's, it's uh, one of its common names is fiber optic grass, which is a really cool name. And it just has these very, very sort of tall, erect, slender stems with this little blob on the end. Looks just like those little old fashioned 80s fiber optic lights. So they're very cool. Some variegated Acorus. This is a small growing plant sort of clump forming and then it starts to form rafts. Sweet scented when you break it, evergreen. But again, I'd always cut these plants back in winter so that the following season you get some nice fresh growth coming through. 
We've also got a few clumps of a stilby or goat's beard. Now this is really a bog plant rather than a true marginal plant. It'll tolerate its feet sort of in the water, but it prefers to have you know, damp soil rather than as a, as a submersed plant. But I've got the benefit here of, of banking and raking up the gravel so that I can create a few really shallow areas. And some of this in, in pockets will look quite nice. I've got one other little gem here which I've been able to salvage from the original planting. This is Sissyrhynchium californicum, or yellow-eyed grass. And again, it's a bog plant rather than a marginal plant, but it will tolerate about an inch or so of water. And it's almost like a miniature iris. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, there's some al alpine varieties that are very similar, but this is a true bog plant. Lovely flowers. So we'll put that somewhere as well. So I'm gonna get planting. You've probably seen me doing this before, but essentially I shall be raking out a little depression in the, in the planting zone. Simply positioning the plants where I want them and then just raking back over the gravel to hold it into place. Really simple, really effective, much, much nicer than using the typical plastic uh, marginal baskets in ponds that end up falling off the shelf. And this looks a lot more natural and it allows the plants to grow naturally. Now ideally you want to use a fine substrate. This is a 10 mil gravel. This particular one here is called Gill Mill. I love the color of this. It works very nicely with the stone I use. Um, but just a standard 10 mil shingle is fine. If you've got big fish in the pond, um, koi carp particularly, you're gonna to wanna to probably cover this in a layer of some larger 20 mil gravel or some very small pebbles or cobbles just to make sure the fish can't root around in here. But in this particular pond with small fish, not a problem. So I'm gonna crack on doing this and you'll see the end result shortly. Just planting a few plants in some of the, the gaps between the rocks here. I've deliberately left a, a bit of a planting zone between these two large rocks so that we can get something to creep over and sort of soften the edges and, and break up some of this hard surface. And I'm using some saxifraga here. This is, uh, well, it's come from an established plant. You can see it's already profusely in flower. Seems a little bit, a bit mean, but the best thing to do actually is to remove and cut off all of these flowers and some of the foliage so that the plant can concentrate on developing its, its roots. It's not always easy trying to transplant bits and pieces like this. And then these be kept well watered as well. But if it takes, they'll look very nice in there. I'm really enjoying just working, listening to the sounds of the water now. It sounds lovely with these two cascades running. 
and a few more days with the filtration running, the pond will clear, and it will really look like a lovely feature. And today is the last day on the job. We've got a bit of tidying up to do, a little bit of jet washing on the surrounding patio, and just some final kind of micro planting with bits and pieces like this. And then I'll show you the finished result. Now Saxifragia is a, is a fantastic plant to, to use in situations like this. Lovely evergreen foliage, mats of dense evergreen foliage that just sort of carpet everything. And they're real sort of freely, profusely flowering through the summer months. There we go. I've got a little bit of a juga left over as well. Again, this is great ground cover. It really likes very damp and shady areas. So this is great up in this sort of woodlandy area between the two cascades and will look lovely just sort of growing down over the rocks. It's got these lovely sort of bluey mauve flowers. Uh, again, a nice easy plant to use. We'll find somewhere for that. Just leave some of these tendrils just creeping over the edge of the rock and just touching the water. Lovely. Well, I've come back to see how the pond is settling down. It's been about three weeks since the construction was completed. And if I'm honest, I wasn't very happy with the ending on my video either. The sound quality was uh, having a bit of a blip. So I've taken the opportunity to pop back, bring my camera and have a look at it. And I have to say, I'm very pleased with how it's establishing. The plants, the water lilies particularly, have really, really come on nicely. Despite the weather being pretty poor in July, it's relatively warm and we've had a lot of rain, a lot of water, and that's been fantastic for, for all garden plants. The lilies hitting the surface like this are looking, looking gorgeous. The pond has cleared nicely. Filtration system doing its job and all the fish seem nice and happy. Well, it's nice to pop back and see how it's settling down. Lovely to see the plants establishing like this. I think I'm just going to sit here and enjoy the pond, have a bit of quiet contemplation. There's almost a bit of deflation when you finish jobs like this because you, you, know, you work hard and you put a lot of yourself into doing these kind of projects. And when it's finished, you kind of think, oh, what next? But it's immensely satisfying and it's going to be really nice to come back and see how this settles down. It was a nice job to work on. The pond itself was already lovely. Very interesting shape. Loved, I've always loved the shape of this pond. Uh, and having the damage to the line, it was just a good opportunity to address some of the small kind of teething issues that my clients had with the surround of the pond. And I think the end result is a, is a good one. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Ed from Crystal Clear Aquatics. I'll see you in the next pond.